Hello and welcome back to Edsworth Street. So, a little bit has changed since the last video. Um, some of you have may seen via social media, the Facebook page, Instagram, that I've fitted some of the signals. Um, I've also done some extra work. So, this board here has actually got some pelmet lights in, which I've wired in now, and they're all in. So now I've got to do the exact the same for this board, this board, and this board. Um, so I've got all the lights wired in, just using the transformer. So there we go, turn it off. That's what it looks like. If I turn the lights off there, pull the curtain so you can, oh, a bit dark. And then the mattress Lee, there we go. So that's one um, of the uh, boards that has done. Now, in a previous one, um, I didn't know if I wanted to put something over the top to try and um, counteract the the light. So I've kindly got some of the baseboards, M boards ready to try and give me um, that effect. And it says, um, and that's what it's probably going to look like. Um, and that's have, then having a hard top, but then it just makes that board, uh, if I put really thin ply on, it makes it a little bit heavier, but then it stops the light from bounding up. You can't see anything, but then obviously I'd have to paint all the baseboards at the top blue, so, you, so the light reflects off. Um, still got to think of the best way of doing it, obviously you won't see that, because obviously there'll be another board on onto the end. Um, I'm trying to find another board that I could just quickly. I found one. Just quickly do that. So that will be one board, which will then highlight it quite nicely. Um, what's your thoughts on lights, um, helmet lights, and things like that? So uh, we used to have an O gauge light in the club, and we used to have helmet lights over the top. Um, Heat and Lodge has got lights over the top as well um, and other people have used um, various other different methods as well putting lights on and you know I prefer to do more lights on the layout so if you're in a darker place the light it brings up the light but because obviously I've got the picture frame baseboards I thought well I do need to put some sort of lighting in there of some description but obviously then it shows all the imperfections as you would see um it's a very difficult um decision to make especially when you build an exhibition layout um some of you have seen the stuff that i've gone through luckily i don't show too many of the wobbles um they're not that many but there are a couple so some of you are you know you take louts exhibition some of you have got louts at home and come to show so it's it's a very different way of modeling um you know, you've got the joints, you've got the cables underneath. Um, there's various different things you need to do to make it more durable. You you know, you have to glue it down and you really need to glue it down because obviously you're going to be moving it around, banging it, knocking it. So there's, there's quite a lot that goes into it that you don't really necessarily see or understand. So that's one of the reasons why I obviously had the chat with Ollie at Wardle Road um, to give you an insight of to how exhibitions happen uh, and how everything evolves around exhibitions. You know, it's not just, you know, you just turn up with a layout and they accept you in. You get invites. Some sometimes the invites are, you know, three or four years in advance. Um, so it is, it is a very different type of market. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the lights back on. I'll take you down to the layout, what it's like now, with obviously the lights off, so you can actually see the detail and level that I've gone into it. Um, and then I'll turn the lights back on, and I'll take you down some of the part of the other layout, so you can actually see some of the shunt signals that are now illuminated, uh, and obviously where the signals are being put in place. So come and join me down by the layout. So you've seen this in the last video, there's not really that much changed apart from I've added a couple more pallets in now. Um, and uh, just obviously pop the old lights in up above. So if, I, if you're standing there as a punter and obviously it's a lot closer and I turn the lights off, 
they, you know, it's a little bit duller, but also with the lights, it just makes it that little bit more brighter. Um, and the trouble is it will show the imperfections of things that are, are right around the layout. So um, I've added in, um, obviously, all the, the shunt signals. This, they still need wiring up and the dummy. I've still got one more signal to put in there and I've ordered another signal from Matt at Absolute Aspect and try and keep him with the colour light signal. So it's going to be quite an interesting um, little feature. Um, what I'm actually going to do in this one, I'm actually putting one of the uh, four aspect uh, Roger Murray colour light signals. I'll put a picture in here. Um, and so what I'm going to do with this one is sit and then obviously get um, a couple of heads and a couple of pallets and then look like they're getting ready to change it over. They've done all the rest of them, they're just waiting for some of them to done. So what to do, so what I've also done here is I put some more greens and I put a, a little cabinet in there. Uh, I've added in um, for razor line kit, the southern concrete fencing and obviously put a load of bushes in. Um, a load of bushes up there simulating going up to the, the hill. So coming down this way, you'll see there is one shunt of light. Now, I'll do it right, there we go. Zoomed in, it's about right. Um, I don't want it too overpowering um, for that. Um, and then so you can see further down, it does, it does change it quite a bit. So panning back out. Uh, what I've also done is I popped in another length of concrete fencing. Uh, I've put some water thing putts in. I've got some more of the HM2000, 1000s uh, dummy point machines. They need to go in there and there. And obviously I've still got the third rail to fit on that, which I'll do today. So I've got the shed out again. Uh, it's been a while since that one's been out. Um, little bits are falling off but then like everything else uh, when it's sat in a box for so long and think rattling around so you can see there's one of the absolute aspect signals um, which is fantastic obviously I've put in the um, ID plate of the uh, which, which number it is which is GL3 which is that one there um, I was toying of putting a um, a board down the side of it obviously being so close to a window just don't want to affect people but obviously it's an office building so shouldn't be too bad then um, let's move that out of the way I've also fitted in one of the or oh, the only which is a very unusual uh, limit of shunt which is there which I've got to glue it in place so I need to Teen it back a little bit, put some glue in it, and then just put some ballast in there just to fill it in. Um, obviously, then you've got the substation here, and then obviously the last remaining um, one of the signals. Same again, I've fitted the uh, ID plates, and that's GL6. Um, so, yeah, so I've not quite decided what I'm going to do with this area yet. I still need to work out, am I going to put a little like a little path and then have some kids looking over or some adults taking some photos. I've not quite decided on what I'm going to do yet. Um, so I've still got the, the signal box to, to put in over here. I've still got obviously the warehouses. Uh, I've still got the buffer stops to put in and wire up. Uh, and also I've still got quite a fair bit to do on the old shed. Here is the shed that is going to be the MPV depot. Um, I've just stuck one light in, so I'm just going to start wiring up um, and placing some more of these little nano LEDs already um, printed on some circuit board. I can't remember where I got them from. Um, so I've got to be a bit clever on how I do this. So all I'm doing is a little bit of dob of some Yoohoo. Um, and then I'm going to place them um, in the same place. I'm going to do one there and then one down that end. And another 
that little dob. Um, and then put that one in back there. Slowly. I don't want it to be too bright, but I want it to be bright enough so you can actually see inside the actual shed. So there's all four in the shed. So now, this side is going to be nearest the back scene. That side is going to be nearest the, the, the running line. Um, so the question is, is now, obviously I've got to fit some more in. Now, obviously I'm going to have to go that side um, and do it so they're long enough. That the wires are long enough to fit underneath. Um, or do I do them the same side? You know, do I do it like that so they're on the same side, or do I do it like that to give even the light out across? So, what I'm going to do is I think I'm probably going to do it on opposites. Um, I think that would be better, I think, because you're not going to see it if you're looking in the shed. So, with this one, I'm going to be uh, I'll pop it over that side right in the corner and then once they're glued in and they're in place I'm just gonna move it around so I get a bit of the stickiness and I'll then feed the wires underneath just like that Just a matter of hiding the wires in the building and then getting it to a, a central place to wire up. So let's shove a, another one on. And we've done it on that one. So we'll do it on that one down a bit. To represent to where it is, just got enough. In there, okay. think it's going to be bright enough but I think it will be and then last but not least in that far corner so we've got plenty of lights in there so now I've got to somehow get them all into one little area and then solder on so I don't know how I'm going to do it as yet uh, I think I'm probably going to use like what I've done on the previous lights is use some PCB um, boards to, and then feed the wires that way round. Um, at least them that way. They're all in the right place for me to wire. So. If you look, we're look in the, the middle of the shed, um, you'll be able to see all the different types of wiring. Well, I don't want you to see that. Well, yes, okay, you would see some of wiring. Um, I've still got a fit of, a light above the door as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some more yoo -hoo. Just to 
get the wires in place, but I think what I'll do is I'll wire it up first, just to make sure that it's all up there. Just make sure the soldering iron's nice and hot and it's ready to ready to go. So I've got some PCBs. So now all I'm gonna do is just Dollop some solder on each side, so they're already tinned. Oh, want to happen? Dollop some solder on that side. Dollop some solder on that side. I don't know some of these it looks quite thin, and it is. And there's one that side, and then some on there. So, I think what my aim, I think, is to do is to get one in this corner, one in this corner, and try and get all the wires feeded through. Um, so, I think the first aim is we know all the wires will fit, and then it's just a matter of feeding them all together. So, what we'll do is, we will, we know... Mm. That wiring and that wiring is there, so we'll pop it in this corner here. He says confidently. Um, let's do it that way around. So now we should be able to. They are the longest ones to reach. So, these ones, just pick the door up. That's the longest one. Same as the red, and then the red can go on. Take that one, that's fine. And that one should keep that in place. And so now I'm going to do exactly the same with this one, but I'm going to put a dollop on there instead, and then onto the wall. Just turn that one around. This gives me a bit more play to try and hide the wires. So now this becomes the tricky part. I'm going to start cutting these wires so they're a little bit shorter so that then there's not so um, many wires. So I'm going to cut that one to about there. He says. The trouble is, it's like, like everything else, it's always in the wrong, there we go, the wrong angle for you guys to to see. And then the trouble is, sometimes I get so carried away, I forget to actually record, which I'm sure most of you get carried away and then by the time you realise it it's like really late in the evening I've done that a couple of times where I've been so busy and getting the uh, getting the layout up to ready I remember doing it for Warley a couple of years ago um, I was Getting the layout, Ebsworth Street, all ready for uh, Wally. And uh, I got the information pack through from them. And they said, oh, congratulations, you've uh, got this amount of space. And I was thinking, why have I got an extra space left over? What I realised is I hadn't actually built the last board. 
that I said to uh, to Wally that I was going to build. So luckily, I had some spare annual leave while at work, and uh, I uh, used it and uh, built a four foot by two foot board in a week all wired up all ready to go a week before Warley and most of you thinking mad uh, yes that was one of the words that uh, I used or some of the other words um, that people have also said is why did you why did you leave it so late? Well, I, well, I didn't. Um, I uh, just literally, I forgot. I know it's going to look, it looks a little bit messy in there at the moment. But it, once I, I get to a point, what I will do is I may even put a false wall in just to hide all this. There. This one's pulled the LED off because there we go. There we go. A bit of solder. Get that wire out of the way. Remember, you've still got to wire in another wire. For the... now, see, now it's just a, a little bit of a just a hold the wires into place. That'll hold that those in there. He says, moving them all up to the, the highest possible point. In. So we want some electrical tape just to hold those ones in place. That is that side done. I'm going to just tape up those so they don't move about. And then, because that's going to be that side, you're not going to see the wires unless you really look in and notice it. Which now, that's going to bug me. So, luckily, it's not that. Not dried that much, and obviously I've got stuff to put all along inside the building. So 
I'm going to carry on doing this bit. I'll catch you in a moment. So now I'm actually going to be fitting a tiny little light just above the door, which is just there. So I've used the 0.5 of the drill bit and just feeding the wires through. There we go. And the light is above the door, which you can just see there. Unfortunately, you're, you're at the right, wrong height, you just need to be a little bit taller. Let's do that. There we go. So, there we go. So, you're in there. Use some glue behind it and then pull it in from the wires and then hold it in position for a second or two and then hopefully push down and then I shall now leave that to set for about two or three hours try not to move it um, so it stays in that position and then it should be then easy enough to wire up the uh, the door light so all the lights are now done inside and obviously if you were doing looking at it like that you wouldn't actually see it it's only if you actually then looked up you can just about see some stuff but if you look that side you can see the the wiring so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there and then I'm going to do some more scenery work so come and join me on the lap and around this area so I'm slowly working down um, the same thing again I'm gonna to have to put a fence up of some description um, to uh, protect like the MPV depot uh, very similar to what Tunbridge has got um, and obviously then wiring the rest of the lights I've got one strip in at the moment I need to put another two in um, which will we'll get there eventually um, but then I've also got other various little bits of lights and uh, and uh, walkways and some various different um, little bits that I've got ready which obviously I'm gonna have to put in the shed uh, and obviously populate the shed as well because obviously people can see it and obviously where I put a clear uh, roof in people will be able to see on in the interior um, of what's actually going to be happening so what I'm going to do now is I've got this is going to be my dilemma this area here so I think if I work on this for this episode or this this video um i'll try and get as much as i can down this end um and obviously then get the third rail in because this is all pretty much quite easy easy stuff to do um uh i've got three balls left the third rail to do which should be should have enough he says confidently um and then work on like the back bit so getting the concrete fencing up behind the signal around it uh, back along make it a bit more realistic um, and obviously then get the interior for the signal box done uh, and also the interior for the shed so there's quite a fair bit to do so what I will do is I shall leave you with a little time lapse of me working down that end trying to get it realistic looking as possible um, but uh, so far um, it's not looking too bad so I'll give you some running shots of previous that I've taken um, and then come back to me what I've done down that end
to some bit of modelling now is I've put I've laid the fence down so I know exactly where it's going to start and go up to and then end and then also this is what it's going to look like that side um I kind of want a separation so I don't know if some of you may have seen um Tunbridge they've got an MPV depot countryside of the station um and that's what I'm kind of getting the feel so obviously you've got the lines there it's all blocked um and everything so that's the uh, general idea so <clears throat> obviously I didn't plan to have a fence there but I thought well I've got to have some sort of a fence so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to stick you down on the track um well, you'll be able to see what I'm going to do. Um, and then I can... You'll be able to see... Uh, what I'm going to do with laying the track. So, I've got myself a trusty drill bit. Um, I know this is where I want it to go. Uh, I want to go as close to the... Um, close to the the line as possible so I'm going to put one little mark uh, about there which also you won't be able to see because my hands in the way so I'm just going to do one little drill mark there wiggle measure it and then put the other one there And also you can disguise it in whatever way you want to and then obviously then stick the fence in place okay so that's all good so find my trusty glue which i'll put somewhere safe which is over on the workbench <coughs> and then all i do is i look for the holes a bit of w who there a bit of a dob of yoohoo there, put the fence in, and then hope that it try and stands up, which it doesn't, which is always the way. And then I tend to use bits that are just floating around because um, now it's going to become the difficult part because I've got to try and marry it up as, as close as possible. It doesn't look too silly. So I'm going to do that one there. Yeah. And I'm going to do that one there. Yeah. So as I get closer, further up to where you're sitting on the shed, um, I want to try and get as close to the running lines as possible. So from there, obviously we know that there's going to be a bit of a hill there. So all, all I do is I get a knife or a screwdriver. And then all I do is I just, where I've done the ballast at different heights. And as you can tell, that's not really glued. Uh, use the old trusty hoover. that I've just scraped away and then at least then that way we get into some sort of curve on there so same thing again I'm going to do a bit of dab of glue along the line now because I want this to be a little bit stronger and sit in place And we've knocked that one over, which is what we didn't want to do. Still knocking it over. And then same thing again. Now we're getting to points where we want to stick something in front of it to 
hold that in place. Well, now that's setting, it gives me a chance to now perfect it. So this one here has already got some arms coming out of the fence. So what I would do is I'll do exactly the same, but this time I'll just marry it up. Um, that one there. And what I've done with most of that down there, there's two bits where it could actually sit. <coughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use some you who along where I want it to sit in the hole, and then obviously then up the bit where I want it to glue onto, and it becomes quite a fiddly task because you want it to glue into place. And set but obviously you want it to to look right as well so we will another okay, and there's some description that's not too that we should be able to get it into a right place there we go. So I'm going to repeat the process. You've joined me about 45 minutes later. Uh, it's all pretty much into place. I've just got to fit the Acro scale buffer stop there um, and do some bits around here. I'm going to lay some stuff in the middle here and lay loads of stuff down the side there so it looks like a proper depot. Um, but that's look, not looking um, too bad. It's how I wanted to try and achieve it. Um, and obviously, that's looking down the side of the, the track. Um, I've just got to do the left side of the shed now so I've just got that bit left to do up to there so come and join me once I've uh, finished this bit A little bit has changed since uh, I saw you guys last. 
um, as you can see, the light here that I fitted on this one didn't actually work, so I need to order another one. Um, the lights inside now work, as you can see, there's quite a lot of interior, and that's what I want to kind of get, so people can see that there's some stuff going on in the depot, uh, but not too much. I've put some little bits outside, um, and there's inside the depot, um, as best you can see. And then if you imagine an MP feed then just gets dragged in. Uh, it gets quite tight, but uh, it's not too bad. And I'll sort of take you down this end. It's still not quite understand, not too much. But he's got uh, quite a fair bit actually in there. And the downside about it is obviously where I moved the layout, it's jigged it and it's moved all the... Uh, all the glue so fingers crossed hopefully I'll be able to do something do a bit of weathering before I finish so that's pretty much what the building's going to look like um, there's some more wiring being done and you can tell there's a couple of modules that are flashing to them so you can see a little bit has changed in the shed um, I haven't finished down that far end just there just yet um, I'm quite happy how the shed's turned out. Still got quite a fair bit to do. I've done some more wiring. Um, so fingers crossed, hopefully, um, we should have all the signals up and running by next video. Excitement. Um, I really am looking forward to it. Obviously, some of you may have seen on social media um, of some of the shunt signals that I fitted and the last remaining uh, four aspect color light signaling. Um, so I'm gonna leave it for this video. Um, and just say a huge thank you for watching. Bit of a lengthy one, this one, as you can tell. Um, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on those notifications, and guess what? I hope to see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.